Hey everybody, hope you're all doing good. And uh, today we are going to discuss the current affairs for both August and September month 2020. And it's part two of our video. And this is exactly for SEBI grade examination, right? So let's dive into the video very quickly. I want you all to take a note of the upcoming events which can help you stay uh, updated with your preparation and that is we are running a 50 most important question series for management if you're preparing for SEBI grade A and uh, RBA grade B examination it's going to be very useful and we have the lecture 4 coming tomorrow and lecture 5 coming the day after at 6 p.m. and we also have an exclusive garment scheme series for RBA grade B examination which happens every Thursday at 8 30 p.m. and you'll find the links for the same in the description box below. So let's start with the first question for the day. Which of the following insurance companies has recently launched comprehensive pet dog insurance scheme? A. Bajaj Alliance, B. HDFC Ergo, C. Birla Sun Life, D. Aviva, E. Barbie Axa. Yes, the correct answer here is Bajaj Alliance General Insurance Company, right? So this policy is going to provide a comprehensive coverage to domesticated pet dogs of indigenous origin, pedigree, non-pedigree, crossbred, and also exotic breeds. And it's going to cover all those age groups from three months to 10 years. But what becomes more important here is, which is that a company which has introduced, that is Bajaj Alliance. And you have to remember the headquarters of Bajaj Alliance, which is in Pune in Maharashtra. And the current MD and CEO of Bajaj Alliance is Mr. Tapan Singh. Next question. Which of the following organization has recently launched an innovation hub for financial inclusion and efficient banking? A, NPCI, B, SBI, C, RBI, D, both B and C, E, none of the above. The correct answer is C, RBI, right? So RBI has recently set up an innovation hub for financial inclusion and efficient banking. So this innovation hub is mainly going to encourage the startup and the companies and address their financial inclusion and efficient banking transaction. So it uh, tries to bring different solutions to the financial sector by tapping into various areas like data analytics, delivery platforms, cybersecurity and others. And this is going to uh, act as an ideation hub too. This innovation hub will also act as a point for ideas and incubation for different companies which are starting from scratch like the startups. So the main aims of these uh, this innovation hub is deepening the financial inclusion, bringing in efficient financial services, ensuring business continuity in terms of in times of emergency and also strengthening the consumer protection. And it is RBA which has proposed to set up the innovation hub. Next question which has been always in news for most of the time, RBA forms a five-member committee under KV Kamat panel to recommend parameters for A, loan restructuring of loans above 100 crores, for loans above 500 crores, for loans uh, above 1,000 crores, loans above 1,500 crores. What is the answer? It is option D. It is going to restructure loans above 1,000 crores. And we also have to remember that the committee is headed by Mr. K.V. Kamath, right? And this main aim of the committee is to restructure those loans which are above, sorry, D. It is above 1500 crores, right? So do not get confused. It is loans above 1500 crores. RV forms a five-member committee under K.V. Kamath, as we've seen. And the main aim of this committee is to restructure the loans above 1000 and uh, 500 crores and it is going to recommend the various financial parameters to be considered for restructuring such loans which are impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic and this is already discussed uh, in the current affairs section of RBA KB videos so if you've not watched it you can even refer those to uh, those videos too. So to recommend a list of financial parameters it's going to take into account uh, parameters like the leverage, liquidity, debt serviceability etc. Right. The key Takeaways from the examination point of view, the committee is headed by K.V. Kamath and it is going to restructure the loans of 1500 crore and above. And this is going to be mainly helpful for the phase one of the SEBI grade examination, right? So next question is Universal Sompo General Insurance partners with each of the following to launch the Corona coverage cover, a short term policy to cover the COVID related hospitalization. Answer for this question, HDFC, Central Bank, UCO, PNB and BSC, EBICS. The correct answer is option E, 
DAC EBICS. So Universal Song for General Insurance recently partnered with DAC EBICS Insurance Broking Private Limited. And what is the uh, partnership for to launch the Corona coverage cover? And it, it is a short term policy where they are going to cover all the related hospitalization expenses through the BAC's EBICS certified point of sale point of sales person right and it's going to ensure ranging from minimum of 50,000 rupees to 5 lakhs of rupees. We have to know here what is the headquarters of Universal Sampo and BSE. Both of the headquarters is in Mumbai and the MD and CEO of Universal Sampo General Insurance is Mr. Sharat Mathur and the MD and CEO of BSE EBIX is Robin Rena. Right? So, you have to remember these names which can also be asked. Sharat Mathur is the MD and CEO of Universal Sompo S for S. Sompo and Sharad Mathur and MD and CEO of BAC Abex is Robin Raina. Next question, Religare Health Insurance is an Indian health insurance firm established in 2012. The company is headquartered in which of the following places? HNI, B, Gurgaon, C, New Delhi, D, Mumbai and E, Bangalore. The answer is B, Gurgaon. Right, Religare Health Insurance, it is an Indian health insurance company and it is headquartered in Gurgaon, very important. So, why? Because recently, Religare Health Insurance Company was renamed as Care Health Insurance Company and that is the reason it is very important, right? So, what is the new name of Religare Health Insurance Company? It is now called as Care Health Insurance Company. So, you can expect questions on these lines also. So, which was the recent uh, company which was... Uh, renamed as Care Health Insurance. It is Religare Health Insurance Company. And the company, as I told, is headquartered in Gurgaon, Haryana. Right? Who is the current CEO and MD of Religare Health Insurance or Care Health Insurance? It is Mr. Anuj Gulati. Right? So, it is Mr. Anuj Gulati who is heading the Religare Health Insurance. Right? Next question, RBI unveils framework for umbrella entity to manage the payment systems with a minimum capital of how many crores? A, rupees 200 crores, B, rupees 250 crores, C, 300 crores, 350 and 500 crores. What is the answer for this question? What is the minimum capital for which recently RBI unveiled a framework? The correct answer is E. As a lot of you guessed, it is 500 crores. So, RBI plans to set up a pan india umbrella entity with a minimum capital of 500 crores and it's going to manage and operate the new payment systems in the retail payment space here we have to remember that no single promoter in, in or the promoter group can have more than 40 percent investment in the capital of this umbrella entity so uh, the minimum capital is going to be 500 crores and a single promoter cannot exceed 40% of the investment in this capital and the promoter shareholding can be diluted to a minimum of 25% in the coming five years from the commencement of the business of the umbrella entity, right? And a net worth should be of a minimum 300 crores. Capital should be 500 crores and net worth is at least minimum of 300 crores at all the times. And this is going to be a for profit company or a section 8 company under the Companies Act. Right? So, these are the important points that we need to remember. The minimum capital being 500 crores, minimum worth being 300 crores and 40% cannot be exceeded. And this is going to set up and operate new payment systems in the re uh, retail space. It's not only going to include the old uh, payment systems, but it's also going to take into account the new payment systems, which will also uh, include uh, new payment methods like the digital coins, right, or the digital currencies. So, it's not only limited to the existing ATMs or white label POS machines, other based payments and the remittance services. It's also going to include new payment methods, also new standards and technology. And it is also going to monitor the related issues in the country and in also internationally. And it's going to take care of the uh, in awareness about the payment systems too, right. So, these are the main objectives of this umbrella entity. Next question is, RBI has projected India's overall growth for the financial year 2020-2021 at how much percent? What is the overall growth projection for the year 2020-2021 by RBI 
3 percent 4 percent minus 3 minus 4.5 and 4.5 the answer is minus 4.5 percent it has projected a negative overall growth for this financial year that is at minus 4.5 percent so in its annual report rba stated that the india's growth for this year is projected at a minus 4.5 percent and you can see this is because of the covid situation where all the sectors have been affected and mainly it is because of the effect or the slum in the real estate textile automobile among the others next question the central board of direct taxes has launched a computer generated din system which provides for a transparent and recorded communication between the income tax department and the taxpayers what does DIN stand for the central board of direct taxes has launched a computer generated DIN stand system and what does DIN stand for it stands for D document identification number yes and PM Modi recently launched a transparent ta uh, taxation honoring the honest platform with the aim to carry forward the journey of direct tax reforms so there have been several initiatives taken by the government's end to strengthen the efforts or the reforms in the direct tax sector and one of the uh, platform that recently was launched by the Modi government was transparent transaction honoring the honest platform this was launched by cbdt and uh, this is one of the measures along with the earlier measures that was introduced that is the document identification number or din which was aimed to bring more transparency in the official communication between the government and the people right so every document that the cbd de department is going to release will have a document identification number going forward and another uh, measure that the budget 2020 was uh, bringing with the respect to the direct tax reforms for the vivad se vishwas act wherein all the disputes with respect to the direct taxes will be resolved speedily under this act and the end date for this vivad se vishwas act is march 31st 2021 where you can file your declaration so march 31st 2021 it has been extended now right so all these are the reforms with respect to the direct taxes next question which of the following organization joins hands with boolean trade association to deepen the commodity deriv derivatives market so which organization recently partnered with boolean trade association to deepen the commodity derivatives market answers BSC, NSC, SEBI, NCDEX, and NCX. What is the answer? It is A, BSC, which has partnered. It is not NCX, but it is BSC. Very, very important. It has joined hands with the Boolean Trade Association. But you have to remember that NCDEX has also done something related to the com uh, commodity markets recently. And that was it has launched an option on goods contract right ncdex has recently launched an option on goods contract for three commodities what are those three commodities option on goods contract was launched by ncdex recently for three commodities and that two agricultural commodities for the very first time which include wheat maize and rapeseed right so this is again one thing because it was the first in the country to launch option and good uh, contracts for the agricultural commodities that was done by NCDEX. Here we are talking about BSC which has joined hands with the Boolean Trade Association to deepen the commodity de derivatives market and here its main aim is to organize seminars and awareness programs on the price risk ma management for the Boolean traders and the jewelers. So it's going to act as an effective hedging tools right and it's also going to make these um, jewelers and the Boolean dealers more benefited because it's going to reduce their price risk with this option on go option in goods contract right so this is done with the boolean traders here but as i told ncdex has launched this option in goods with for the agricultural commodities which of the following places do not house sebi regional office so which places do not have a regional office of the sebi can I have the answers the correct answer is d Pune, yes. So SEBI does not have a regional office in Pune. It has uh, four regional offices in Kolkata, Delhi, Ahmedabad, and Chennai. And its main office, as we all know, is in Mumbai. 
So why was it news? Recently, SEBI decided to decentralize the portfolio managers registration work, right? So portfolio, portfolio managers are those whom we approach for the investment decisions. So these are the professionals who are responsible for making any investment decisions on behalf of us and for carrying out our investment activities. So their registration is now going to be decentralized. So it has been decided that the processing of the re registration applications for these portfolio managers will be done at the respective regional offices, right? And that is the reason I have asked a question on where all SEBI has regional offices. So next question, which of the following state is the most tax compliant state in the year 19, 2019, right? Which is the state which is most tax compliant? A Delhi, B Punjab, C Gujarat, D Telangana, and E Andhra Pradesh. It is yes, Gujarat is the most tax compliant state in the assessment year 2018 19 based on the proportion of returns filed to the PAN holders, right? And which is the state that is least compliant? It is Bihar. It is very easy to remember, isn't it? Most of the parameters Bihar falls uh, short. No offense, but it is the least compliant state with respect to the tax compliance and Gujarat emerges as the most tax compliant uh, state with respect to the proportion of the returns filed to the PAN holders. Next question on September 22nd, 24, 2020, the 15th Digital Conclave on India-Africa Project Partnership was held virtually from New Delhi, which was organized by Exxon Bank and Dash, A NASCOM, B EPCI, C Confederation of Indian Industry, D Try, and E none of the above. The answer here is C Confederation of Indian Industry. Yes. So EAM recently inaugurated this, that is Ministry of External Affairs has inaugurated the 15 CII Exim Bank Digital Conclave on which country's partnership? So you can expect questions on these lines also in the examination. So it's a partnership between India and Africa that these uh, digital event talks about, right? So it is organized as we have already seen by CII, CII and Exim Bank, that is Export Import Bank, and with the support of Ministry of External Affairs along with Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So you have to remember all the partners who are working for this digital event and it is on India and Africa project partnership. Next question, which of the following companies recently launched central bank digital currencies? Very important. Which company recently launched central bank digital currencies? A Visa, B American Express, C Standard Charter, D MasterCard and E none of the above. Answer is... MasterCard. It's not Standard Charter, but it is MasterCard, which is recently launched Central Bank Digital Currencies Testing Platform, right? So we have to know about this. What is a Central Bank Digital Currency? These are digital currencies which are very similar to the Bitcoins, but one difference is that it is going to be backed by their respective Central Bank. So these are legal digital tenders. Right, that is the main important differences from the bitcoins, which are not actually legitimate or regist or they are certified, not certified by the respective central bank. So, what is MasterCard up to here? It has recently launched the central bank digital currencies testing platform. And what is it going to do? It is going to act as a testing platform, which will allow all the central banks to evaluate the CBDC use cases, that is the central bank digital currencies use cases and it's also going to help these banks come out with strategies so that they can simulate an effective digital currency ecosystem, right? So that is why MasterCard has launched the central bank digital currencies and here you have to remember that um, India still do not have such an ecosystem in India but there are some countries in the world which has already have some legal tenders that is central bank digital currencies. They are countries like Uruguay, right? Uruguay has its own legal tender, digital tender. We have country like Sweden and also China, right? Which have come up with their bank, uh, central bank digital currencies. But India has no such concept uh, till now. It's still in the research stage, right? Here you have to remember MasterCard has come up with this platform, which is going to allow all the countries to use this and build their CBDC, that is their digital currency ecosystems. Next question, which of the following? India's 
leading alternate lending platform launched the first of its kind digital revolving credit line called Lazy Plus that combines the power of UPI and also the concept of buy now pay later concept. So you will buy now but you can pay later. So what is the lending platform which has launched this kind of Lazy Plus concept? A PayPal, B, PayU Finance, Insta, Mojo, D, Mobi, Quick and now the above. The answer is B, PayU Finance. Lazy Plus combines the best of the buy now pay later concept with the UPI functionality to support India's evolving credit needs and this was launched by PayU Finance, right? So you have to remember that PayU Finance has come up with this Lazy Pay concept which is the first of its kind concept and it's a strategic response to the market's demand for easy access to the credit across online and offline platforms and also which gives us a pay later option, right? And here the customers can set up their accounts using a two-minute KYC process, which is very, very simple, simplified, streamlined KYC process as the newly launched solution seamlessly integrates into the LazyPay app. Next question, which of the following mutual fund companies launched child plan with exposure to gold? So which mutual fund company recently launched a child plan with exposure to gold? Kotak Mutual Fund, Access, SBI Mutual Fund, UTI and Tata Mutual Fund. The answer here is option C, SBI mutual fund was the company, mutual fund company which launched this child plan with exposure to gold. So it has launched a new fund offer of SBI Magnum's Children Benefit Fund Investment Plan. So it's going to be an open-ended equity oriented fund for the investment for the goals related to your child and suitable for children age group between 1 to 14 years, right? So you have to remember that it is SBI mutual fund which has launched this exposure to gold plan. So where is the headquarters of SBI mutual fund? And it is as always, it is there in which place? It is in Mumbai, right? So like most of the organization, it is also headquartered in Mumbai. And who is the current managing director and CEO of SBI mutual fund? It is Mr. Vinay. It is Mr. Vinay M. Thompson. who is the CEO of SBI Mutual Fund. Next question, Visa has partnered with each of the following to launch a grant program in India to support women entrepreneurs. A, Niti Aayog, B, UN Women, C, I Fund Women, B, Seva and E, none of the above. What is the answer? Visa partnered with I Fund Women. Option C is the correct answer here. So Visa has partnered with I Fund Women to launch a grant program in India to support the women entrepreneurs. You have to remember which is the organization partnering with which. So Visa has come up with I Fund Women to support the women entrepreneurs. And you have to know that I Fund Women is a marketplace for women owned business and all the people who want to support them with uh, both skilling, both capital and also connection, right? Very, very important. Can I have the answers on where I Fund Women is headquartered in? In which place? Is it located? Can I have the responses from all of you? Where is iPhone located in? Yes. It's based in, not Geneva, but it's based in New York, right? So iPhone Women is a company which is based in New York and it is now partnering with Visa to launch this great grant program for supporting the women entrepreneurs, right? Yes. So which of the following company has collaborated with Matrix Partners to help early stage small and medium businesses to maximize their digital potential? A. Google, B. Amazon, C. Facebook and D. Microsoft. So this is the current affairs series for phase one of the examination. It is not for phase two and that is the reason it is going to be relevant for all the other examinations too. Right? But we are picking up topics which can have most questions in the CB grade examination. Right? The answer is option C. Facebook not Amazon. So Facebook recently associated with Matrix Partners to scale up the early stage small and medium businesses. So Facebook announced this partnership with Matrix Partners so that it's going to help the early stage small and medium businesses to maximize their digital 
potential and because of the pandemic the face facebook has taken this program online so remember which are the institutions which are collaborating here it is facebook along with matrix next question sebi constituted a technical group on social stock exchange under whom so a rajesh pan b sanyukta samadar c rajesh verma d harsh kumar banwala and e none of the above what is the answer for this question it is option b harsh kumar banwala so we constitute technical group on social stock exchange under harsh kumar banwala right so what is social stock exchange in the first place before understanding what is the current affairs all about what is social stock exchange it is nothing but a platform wherein you will see that the social enterprises and the voluntary organizations ngos can list themselves and can raise the capital right so this is mainly for the non governmental organizations and for the social organizations who want to uh, raise capital those uh, organizations or can list themselves on this social stock exchange just like the companies and the startups list on different stock exchanges to raise the capital here on the so social stock exchanges these uh, social enterprises can list themselves right and you must remember that this was a concept that was mooted in which budget it was mooted in the budget 2019 union budget 2019 mooted this concept of social stock exchange and it is sebi who is going to be the regulator for this social stock exchange too right and these kind of concepts exist already in countries like singapore uk and others and india it's a new concept that was introduced so with this now let's see what is the current affairs all about sebi has recently set up a technical group on social stock exchange to develop a framework for bringing in or onboarding the non profit organizations and also the for profit enterprises right so it is also going to look into the performance and well upon the aspects related to the social impact and the social audit and the group is under the chairmanship of mr harsh kumar banwala the former chairman of nabard right and you have to remember that already a working group has been set up for the same and it has come up with high level recommendations which include the participation of non profit organizations and for profit enterprises to not just ngos or non profit organizations but also for profit enterprises which have social impact can be listed on social stock exchanges and also uh, subject to committing a minimum reporting requirements right so these are the important things that we have to remember next question which of the following company has tied up with sbi for long term syndicated loan of 10000 crore rupees a vedanta b hindustan unilever c dcm shriram limited d bombay dyeing and e electrotherm limited the answer is a vedanta right so vedanta recently tied up with sbi for this long term syndicated loan of rupees 10000 crore you have to remember three things here very importantly one is which is the organization that is vedanta with which of the banks that is sbi and how much is the loan for it is 10000 rupees so this syndicated loan is offered by a group of lenders who would work together to provide credit to the large borrower and sbi has committed around 5000 crores for the same and other 5000 crores are going to come from the other borrowers lenders sorry and you have to remember here that vedanta is headquartered in mumbai maharashtra and the current md and ceo of vedanta is mr sunil daggal right who is the current md and ceo of vedanta it is mr sunil daggal and it is again headquartered in mumbai next question murli ramkrishnan appointed as the md and ceo recently for which of the following banks a bank of maharashtra c bank of baroda b bank of baroda c karur vaishya bank d south indian bank and d e federal bank So Murli Ramkrishnan was appointed as the MD and the C CEO of. It is not. It is not Federal Bank. I'm extremely sorry for this. Right? It's not um, option E, but it is South Indian Bank. Right? So he was appointed as the MD and CEO of South Indian Bank, and the bank has got uh, RBI's approval for the appointment for the period of three years, with effect from October first, twenty twenty. And Murli Ramkrishnan was recently retired from ICICI Bank as senior general manager at Strategic Project Group. Right. 
and you have to remember something very important about south indian bank which is where it is headquartered it is headquartered in thrissur kerala and its md and the ceo earlier was mr kamesh goel and it's now going to be morally ramkrishnan taking his place so you can expect question that who was the past uh, md and ceo it is mr kamesh goel and the current md and ceo is going to be mr morally ramkrishnan last question for the day which of the following insurance companies introduced a chatbot service lego on google assistant to help policy holders queries answered by the voice commands a bajaj alliance b icici prudential life insurance c birla sun life insurance edelweiss and digit insurance the correct answer is b icici prudential life insurance yes so icici prudential life insurance introduced this concept of a chatbot service with the name lego right on google assistant so that it's going to help the policy holders of icici insurance and their queries can be easily answered by the voice commands and this is going to be available in english and nine indian languages this can also be asked in how many indian languages in total it's going to be in 10 different languages and the headquarters of icici prudential is in mumbai maharashtra and the current md and ceo of icici prudential life insurance is mr ns kannan so how does ai powered chatbot help in insurance Uh, penetration here so the name of the ai powered chatbot is ligo and how is it going to improve the insurance penetration because it's going to help in uninterrupted flow of business information and it's going to pro give our automated claim support so this is naturally going to decrease the time in getting the support for the claims and it has an interactive power of insurance chatbots which exceed the capability of the insurance agents obviously so it's going to serve as a virtual assistant right and also it has got an advanced underwriting options this is all these are all the ways in which it's going to improve the insurance penetration and icici has for the same reason launched this ai powered voice chat chatbot on the google assistant and the name of it is lego right so thank you so much for watching this uh, august and september month current affairs part 2 we'll be completing this in the next week's video and at all of board we have an exclusive coverage for seti grade examination which covers learn practice and revise modules in the learn module you, you will see that you will have an access towards the video lessons and the study notes which will cover all subjects of both paper 1 and paper 2 and also phase 2 and in practice session we have the subject wise to topic test for every topic and also have the full coverage test and in revision module we have revision classes and also live practice classes you can enroll for the sebi course by using my20 as the coupon code which will help you get the 20% discount here and as i told this is for phase 1 current affairs so phase 1 it's going to be very very broad which will be more similar to any other banking examinations right so you also have to remember that we are running most important uh, questions for management series for sebi grade and rbi grade b examination and we have started this monday and we should be ending with this friday so it is happening at every 6 pm uh, daily right and also we have an exclusive government schemes lecture series which is based on rbi grade b phase 2 of the examination which happens on every thursday at 8:30 pm and you will find the links for the same in the description box below Thank you so much. If you have found the video relevant, please hit the like button. And if you want to stay updated with the preparation, please subscribe to the Olive Board channel. Thank you so much.